Welcome to the Week in Review. From the Government Information Service, I'm Richmond Felix. The first sittings since the opening session of the 11th Parliament on July 12 were held this week. The intergovernmental agreement between St. Lucia and the United States of America was discussed at Tuesday's House of Assembly meeting. In presenting the bill, the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service said it was about facilitating an easier means of communication whilst preventing money laundering. The agreement between the government of St. Lucia and the government of the United States of America to improve international tax compliance and the implement um, factor. Whereas the government of St. Lucia and the government of the United States of America, each a party, and together in the parties, desire to conclude an agreement to improve international tax compliance through mutual assistance in tax matters based on the effective infrastructure for the automatic exchange of information. The Education Minister has been touring school facilities ahead of the implementation of a program of preventative maintenance which is seen as the best way forward in dealing with the extremely high cost of repairs needed annually. More in this report from the Ministry of Education. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, the Honorable Dr. Gil Rigobert met recently with stakeholders involved in the temporary relocation of the George Charles Secondary School. Students and staff of the George Charles Secondary School will be reassigned to the John Odlum Secondary School, effective September 5, 2016, in order to house divisions of the South Lewis Community College, which has to undergo extensive repairs. The Honorable Dr. Gil Rigobert says she is extremely pleased with the outcome of the meeting. Most importantly, issues of curriculum, instruction, student management, staff and student well-being, all of these, among other issues, were raised as we want to ensure minimum disruption to staff, students, and of course to the parents as well. I trust, therefore, that having had this discussion and uh, given that a committee has been established to oversee the transitioning process, that all affected persons will appreciate the need for the temporary arrangement. President of the St. Lucia Teachers Union, Julian Monrose, who was present at the stakeholder meeting, says... This kind of dialogue enhances the relationship between the ministry and the union, especially in circumstances like the one which is currently being confronted. We have always indicated that we want to have open and free dialogue with the Ministry of Education. Um, we're involved in the business of education. We represent the professionals in the system and that nothing can happen if you don't have the professionals on board. And so we're very happy that the ministry understands that it needs to engage the teachers' union. Um, the whole idea is to find solutions because there will be problems. There will be problems in any system. The Ministry of Education has commenced demolition of curtained termite infested structures of the South Lewis Community College and expects to commence rehabilitation works shortly. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Finel Neptune reporting. The Sandals Foundation Cricket Academy has bowled off its 14th year in St. Lucia, where some 33 of the island's best under 15 players will converge for one week at the Darren Sami Cricket Grounds for intense on and off the field training. The 14th edition of the Sandals Cricket Academy is currently underway following an official launch this week at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground. 33 of the island's top under-15 cricketers are being coached, not only in the game of cricket, but other life skills as well. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Department of Youth Development and Sports, Dr. Anthony George, urged the young cricketers to develop an attitude of cricketing excellence. What does it require for you to pursue excellence at that next level? What does it require for you as, you know, national champions, as Windward Islands cricket 
and the 15 champions to pursue that level of excellence, setting excellence as the goal at the next level. Dr. George advised this year's group of camp attendees that they should grasp the opportunity to hone their skills during the academy. Set the imagination. Align it with what you believe and pursue it vigorously by nurturing the skills, the capabilities, and the endless potential that you do have. The Sanders Cricket Academy is a nursery for the development of the island's I national under-15 cricket team and the Department of Youth Development and Sports has been an integral partner during this process. From the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Empowerment, Youth Development, Sports, Culture and Local Government, I'm Ryan O'Brien reporting. The government of St. Lucia received $2.26 million from the Republic of China, Taiwan to upgrade sporting facilities. The funds were donated for lighting installation at the Babano, Canaries, Denry South and Shuazil playing fields. Any money spent in sports is not a cost but an investment and that this contribution and specifically the lighting of four additional paying fields in St. Lucia will go a long ways in helping support the long-term goals that we have for sports in our country. For many community residents everywhere, Taiwan and St. Lucia, I believe, after dinner we still have time to do some interactions in, in the community. So this is, a, I think that uh, it's very important to increase the capacity of the community playing field for multiple uses at different times and create more activities that can keep the youth in St. Lucia engaged through sports. Ten St. Lucian elite athletes are engaging their younger counterparts to develop and empower them through the 758 Olympian program. This comes against the backdrop of five representatives participating at the Rio Games this year, especially Laverne Spencer, who on Thursday qualified for the high jump final, much the delight of fellow St. Lucians. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Youth Development, Sports, Culture and Local Government engaged athletes to foster youth development. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Department of Youth Development and Sports, Dr. Anthony George, says one aspect of the program is to support St. Lucian Olympians in Rio. It is a show of support for our five Olympians who are now in Rio, um, representing St. Lucia at the highest level of their own, their own um, sport. And so we've marshaled the 758 champions, the St. Lucia team from every sporting discipline. Dr. George says this program will teach and inspire over 100 emerging athletes between 13 and 19 years old. We need all of our emerging athletes, our young athletes, to move from their personal best to really establish national records. And then beyond the national records, we want our athletes competing with the world. And so in order to do this throughout this this academic year coming up, we've put together a national coaching program, an, in, an emerging athlete development program, an elite athlete development program with the support of course of our ministers and the government of St. Lucia. The program covers four development aspects, training, personal development, community services and social interaction among the emerging athletes. In this next report, we get an update on the Owen King EU Hospital. Over the past two months, the Owen King EU Hospital has been buzzing with activity, with the arrival and installation of numerous pieces of equipment and furniture. Claudio Merovich has been involved in all tendering and supervision of contracts at the hospital since 2012. He reports that all is on target thus far. Right now we're working on the last five contracts that we have, five contractors that are providing all the general furniture, all the clinical furniture, including all the beds and <clears throat> for uh, delivery beds as well. 
all the surgical tables, uh, also ENT and uh, ophthalmology microscopes, and all the tools and all the equipment that is coming for the maintenance series is also coming in this part of the uh, of the project. And the last two contractors that are going to be starting right now are for physiotherapy equipment and for the lab and the morgue equipment. Mirovich added that all equipment has now been shipped to St. Lucia, with over 30 containers already destuffed at the facility. Several teams of persons are currently engaged in the installation of equipment and furniture within all areas of the facility. Mirovich targets the end of September to be completed with most, if not all, the installation. We expect that some of the contractors also finish their work by the end of August. So we would have only a couple of contractors working in September. And that means that um, all the furniture and all the equipment will be ready to start uh, doing training and for uh, doctors and nurses to start uh, working and, and filling uh, the hospital as their new house, new home. From inception, the Office of the National Authorizing Officer has played a critical role in overseeing procurement, contract management and payments for all contractors. Without the NAO's involvement, um, the communication would not begin. And so all of the communication um, happens with and through the, the NAO. Um, yes, you may have other um, authority figures, you know, the Prime Minister being a key um, person in that, in that negotiation process. But um, given that the Cotonou, um, or the Cotonou Agreement mentions or identifies the NAO in that role, it must happen in his or her presence, whoever sits in the chair at that time. The NAO was born out of the Cotonou Agreement, which binds the EU with the African, Caribbean and Pacific countries and functions as a liaison between the various ACP governments and the EU Commission. Its pivotal role is in managing the developmental assistance provided by the EU. It is anticipated that St. Lucians will be very pleased with the state-of-the-art facility, which will soon be delivered to them. I tell this to everybody, not only to St. Lucians. I think you're going to have a first-class hospital in the island. Uh, nothing uh, is going to be missing. And you're going to have one of the best technologies to take care of the health of all the population, which is one of our objectives and I think uh, the people of St. Lucia can be proud of. Training on the newly installed operating tables commenced this August, with continued training on ENT, ophthalmology and sterilization equipment scheduled for September. Reporting for the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Glenn Simon. Breastfeeding is not only the cornerstone of a child's healthy development, it is also the foundation of a country's development, according to the World Alliance for Breastfeeding Action. The emphasis of Breastfeeding Week this year was on raising awareness on the links between breastfeeding and the Sustainable Development Goals. Here is another report from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Breast is best is the message the nursing and nutrition departments of the Ministry of Health and Wellness continue to drive home to pregnant women and nursing mothers. Exclusive breastfeeding of a baby for at least the first six months of their life is being promoted as the method which is in the best interest of both the baby and mother. Nutritional officer Mariana Gasper Phillips stated, When other foods are introduced too early to the babies, it can adversely affect their growth and development. The breast milk has all the properties, all the nutrients in the right amounts. And so it goes without saying that breast is best for the infant because it was meant for the baby. And by extension, it has benefits to the mother, um, which helps the mother to feel better, helps her womb to, re to the uterus to contract and to, for her to regain her normal size. It has benefits to the mother as well in terms of bonding. Philip indicated that 15 to 20 percent of the average household income can be spent in purchasing baby formula during the first six months of a baby's life which is a huge cost when compared to exclusive breastfeeding. The breast milk is always ready. It is at the right temperature. Um, it is cheap. It has all the antibodies that will protect the baby from a lot of um, childhood infections. The exclusive breastfeeding sensitization workshop was conducted at the Entropo Wellness Center as part of activities in recognition of World Breastfeeding Week. Breastfeeding is a very good thing. It's very healthy for the children because... Even though your body changed, you'll pick up back because I've been breastfeeding seven children and look at me. Um, 
if sometimes I get small, sometimes I get fat, but I still breastfeed. You have no milk to buy, you save from that also. Family nurse practitioner Mary Joseph Sidney notes, though there is a heightened awareness among the general population about exclusive breastfeeding, there is still not enough adherence by mothers. We really want them to understand that exclusive breastfeeding not only helps the physical aspect of the child to grow um, adequately, however, the child's brain, we call the cognitive function of the child, is much improved on children who are breastfed because every property in the breast milk gets to the child. Breastfeeding workshops were conducted throughout the island by the nursing and nutrition departments of the Ministry of Health with the aim of convincing more mothers to stay true to exclusive breastfeeding for at least the first six months of their child's life. From the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I'm Glenn Simon reporting. Organizers hailed a successful production of Mercury Beach 2016. Organizers hailed the successful production of the three-day four event that was Mercury Beach 2016. Maritime consultant Cuthbert Didier says marrying the nautical event with other aspects of St. Lucian culture and Caribbean culture as well infused a unique element into Mercury Beach. This year was to pitch a Mercury experience because this weekend is special because Monday is a holiday in Martinique. So we came up with the idea that if we can get them here from Thursday, meaning people from Guadeloupe, Martinique, Trinidad, Barbados, Jamaica and Miami, They'll stay till the Monday. And to make sure that they infuse themselves in the local culture. So, Grosley Friday night was our fringe event that opened up. And it all came together. Tough lineup, great location. We battled with some bad weather, but as you can see today, came up and it's a good climax. Head of security for the event, Titus Leo, says the boots on the ground approach, coupled with the installation of CCTV cameras, curbed any disturbances before it escalated. He says patrons to the event were as secure as could be. We have a number of security mechanisms in place, including physical security, where it has been taken care of the police elite department, which is the SSU in St. Lucia. So they are taking care of all of the vulnerability areas. To support and to augment the whole security aspect, we have a CC coverage, television coverage. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, the Honorable Dominic Fede, says Mercury has a significant economic footprint for St. Lucia. Numbers are still being crunched, so we don't have any reliable figures, but it is quite significant for sure. And when we look at the amount of vendors and the amount of taxi drivers, I don't know a single um, small hotel in St. Lucia that is empty. At the moment, they're all very, very full. I don't think you can get a room. And they have been booked up months in advance. So this event has tremendous value for our tourism sector, for um, the small hotel sector, certainly. And it justifies the investment of the St. Lucia Tourist Board. Mercury Beach began in Martinique as a thank you event to mariners who purchased Mercury engines. The event has grown into a premier French experience. Meanwhile... The Government Information Service spoke to patrons at Mercury Beach to get their impressions of the event. Mercury Beach, it's a super event. I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to be here. By the official, by the security, thank you, really, by the super. Okay, the Mercury is good, it's good. It's good. It's good. And it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yes, I. <laughs> okay. A lot of people coming from Martinique, coming from Guadeloupe, Trinidad, all the Caribbean islands, uh, come here to to enjoy themselves, to uh, spend money here, and I think it's important to have an event, a such event like this. Hello, moi qui sorti Martinique, nous sorti du commune Robert. Eh ben, c'est première fois que je à Mercury. Et par contre, ça super bien, belle entente, vieux, grand, jeune, enfant, bonne ambiance. Ça a passé super bien et puis on à nous regarder les concerts là. And that's the week in review from the Government Information Service. I'm Richmond Felix.